Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, where we show you financial options that you never knew existed. I'm Joey, the Italian stallion Murray, and I'm joined here by your financial coach and idea guy, Russ Morgan. Welcome in, Russ. Hey, Joey. How's it going? I feel like I should uh, hear the eye of the tiger playing in the background. I you know, that's my, to me. that's my theme music, man. I know it is, man. Absolutely. I just, I just <laughs> love it. By, by the way, if you haven't seen this, Joey, you've got to go online and look up, I think it's like a Facebook clip, but you can YouTube this baby watching a Rocky clip. Oh. oh, it's so awesome. This little kid is sitting there watching like this Rocky like pump up clip and Man. he's imitating all the things that's going on. I got to check that uh, out. It's, it's so good. You'd love it. Thank well, you for sharing that. Happy Easter, by the way. Yes. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We're here on a Monday, which is also exciting because normally we record on Wednesday. Yeah, but it's not for the best reason <laughs> this time, is it? No, unfortunately, we kind of had a little snafu with the audio. We had a great interview lined up for this week's podcast, and I blew it. Jim Oliver, our great friend from South Dakota, Florida. Where's he at today? Who knows? With Create Tailwind. Go check him out on his website. He is a, one of our great friends and also very, very knowledgeable about the infinite banking concept and the things that we teach on this podcast. We had a great interview about how to turn a huge expense, liability, if you will, of taxes as business owners into a benefit to us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall down on the sword here, Joey. It was a great interview. You did an awesome job. Jim did an awesome job. I was a little hot. I was a little hot on the microphone. Yeah, it was Russ, gets a little, Russ gets a little handsy. <laughs> On the uh, mic like from time. Whoa, to time. Wait a second, man. Whoa. Let's let's keep this a family show Whoa. here. Yeah, it's. I will apologize. I didn't have my headphones working that day, so I couldn't hear how loud I was on the episode. But listening to Jim Oliver share with us just one strategy, because we're always looking for ways for you to be able to implement this concept of infinite banking and grow your system, so that you can go out and find outside investments as well. By the ultimate goal just to create more income for ourselves from these policies. Yeah, don't you want more passive income? I and don't, don't these let. policies create them? So how many do you want to make? As how many, many do you want to create? Get. Well, Absolutely. so I, I messed that up, but we feel really strongly about the show that we've got the main gist of it. And we're going to share with you, by the way, there's some articles and other things in the show notes you're going to want to watch. Yeah, don't miss that. Yeah. So listen in to today's podcast and we'll break down this idea of taxes and how do we use it to improve our finances. Good Friday, Joey. This is good Friday to you. This is a really good Friday. The Friday before Easter. That's right. I'm looking forward to this. I can't believe I'm working on Good Friday. That's probably not a good thing. But this morning, I was working out, and that was some work. Like Sunday, Easter, when somebody looked into the tomb and Jesus wasn't there, I looked in the mirror this morning after, I don't know, 30 minutes of you and I just huffing and puffing, and you were no longer there. What happened to you, bro? Man, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, uh, for those of you who don't know, my back is not the best in the world. And somehow I must have tweaked something in the middle of that workout. And I was just in pain, what, agony. What, by the way, how did you hurt your back? Were you like a rodeo clown as a kid or something? <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, You're you know, always in back pain. All that bull riding I did back in the day. No, I don't know. I just have a weak back somehow. I don't, I don't know really where it came from. But it is no fun when you throw your back out. Well, it seemed like... The pain that you were in and still in, because <laughs> please don't ask me to push on your back again. Like when I was sitting out there a second ago, feet off the ground, like all I had, I heard your back crack like one time. 
I thought, man, this is going to go bad. Next thing you know, me and Easy are going to be putting you in a carpet, rolling you up and throwing you in a dumpster or something because I don't want to be responsible. Hey, I will not hold you responsible. I asked you to try to pop my back into place. I don't think it was successful, but but I'm grateful that you tried. <laughs> well, the pain you were in is the pain that I think most of the people who are listening to this podcast right now is we're approaching tax day. Oh, my goodness. Oh, just being a me- business owner, this is a ridiculous time of year. This is that <sighs> you're writing out each individual number on that check and that every zero at the end is just painful. Well, the check is painful, but for me, it's also just the weight of trying to think about all the different items I have to pull together to get it to clay and that, then have him come back box. to me three or four <laughs> shoe box. Like, yeah, I feel I feel like Vince Vaughn in that movie Dodgeball where he like opens <laughs> he opens up the closet. Like this is my filing system, right? That's <laughs> that that's, sounds about right. It's just a burden to me to pull all this together. And that's the weight I'm feeling right now. I think others are probably feeling that same way. And I felt like this was a good day for us to talk about taxes. The interview you and I had with Jim Oliver, I guess, was it last week or week before? A couple weeks ago, yeah. When we were talking about the article, the IBC tax strategy that was done in the Laura Murphy Report, the Infinite Banking Concept, IBC. And it was just interesting to me for us as we were preparing to talk about this today, thinking of, who is preventing us from being successful? And you're always here for the first three to four months out of a year. Every dollar that you make is going to pay for the government, right? That's don't, to pay for your tax bill. I don't think it's just three months out of the year. In some cases, it's getting closer to four or five, six months. Uh, I think of you know that scenario, and it puts a pain in my back. So as we dig deeper today in that conversation we had with Jim, and the solution that exists, or at least, you know, you had several uh, economists and very wise people given ideas of how we can at least use taxes to a benefit. That was reassuring to me. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, we're going to put this actual report in the show notes so that you can read it along with us, but it goes through some very specific scenarios. Of course, your scenario may be very different, but at the end of the day, who doesn't want some way to find a way to make our taxes work for us, not against us. You have to see things differently. And this uh, this article, Jim has this great uh, visual that he does, this comic, and it's, it's like these people standing in line at a movie theater. There's two different movies playing. One is The Inconvenient Truth, and the other is The Reassuring Lie. And the line is full on The Reassuring Lie, and there's nobody standing in inconvenient truth. And I feel like it's just because people don't see things, they just follow. For instance, we got this game right now we're playing. You know I love singing, even oh, though I am goodness. completely Karaoke. awesome at it. I mean, <laughs> it's so awesome. Uh, wow. <laughs> it, it, it's called spontaneous. And it makes all the sense. I only wish I could have thought about this. But how many times do you hear of us, you and I having a conversation and a word comes up, and next thing you know, I start singing a song. Oh, my goodness. Or I start telling you about this, mo- about this movie that was played. I don't know why, <laughs> why I have this, like, I connect times of history to a word or song or a movie or whatever. But somebody actually came up with a game that's that way, Joey. So if you said a word like happy. Oh, then you're going to start... Because I'm happy. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> right. Now, here's the problem with that. Why I can think of a, a song that has the word happy in it. The problem is you're supposed to string five words together. <laughs> oh, yeah. In order to actually qualify. And I, I sometimes struggle with that part. But it's like that game and it's always the concept existed. of that has always existed. Somebody just looked at it differently and said, hey, why don't I create a game where people do exactly what they're already going to do? Well, I mean... Another example, when did people finally wake up and say, hey, we've been dragging our luggage around in the airports for eons, and all of a sudden, why don't we put some wheels on this thing? (laughs) Novel concept. That happened in the 1970s. Finally, someone said, hey, we've had a wheel for, you know, what, since the cavemen? (laughs) Since the beginning of time. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just throw those things on on a suitcase. That makes our life easier. When someone sees something that has always existed, but others have not, it's when great opportunities arise. And every bit of technology that we use today is from that concept. 
and this article today that we're going to kind of unpack. I, I really, it, it's going to be a little bit too hard for us to get too deep in the weeds. So I do want to have yeah, it in the show to notes see it. We so can. you can go and read it because it's, I mean, it's written by a very analytical individual. This guy who wrote it, Carlos Lara, he's the Richard Greer and Pretty Woman. Uh, <laughs> He, and not not in that way, like the way that you're laughing, but he is what's called a workout specialist, meaning that whenever you have a troubled, failing business that enters bankruptcy, he's the one that goes in there and helps them not necessarily always come out of bankruptcy, but at least helps them get rid of the assets and move in a way that helps everybody in the business, you know, come out with some sort of financial gain. Well, he, he's used to looking at things. Oh, he looks at things completely you know, different. Like he's the, the one that, you know, read the Dodd-Frank Act and realized that, oh, now the new rules say the banks can't be bailed out anymore, that they have to have bail-ins. And thankfully, somebody would tell me all of these things because I would have never read it. I'm, That's it, right. It, it does remind me the other day I was, I saw this meme. It had Adam and Eve, and it said the original people who didn't read the Apple Agreement. <laughs> I mean, because who who does? I mean, but thankfully, somebody like a Carlos Lara does. And as we were sitting there with Jim, and he's unpacking the things that are in this article, and as I look at taxes, I think, well, taxes burden us in so many ways from a cash flow as business owners. It prevents us from being able to make certain decisions. We have people making decisions just depending on whether Oh, what, what the tax implications are. Yeah. What, what were we talking about even the other day with somebody that were talking about, well, if I don't make over a certain amount, then I won't have to pay this tax. Or I think it was actually in, in light of the, the health exchange or whatever, but same concept, right? Oh, I don't want to make that much. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. When something is keeping me from trying to pursue greater results, that's never a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Jim, I think, said the phrase when we were interviewing him that our brains are like computers. <laughs> Unfortunately, we get a virus and it, it just prevents us from being able to see the logical. We get confused. That goes back to Willie Wall Street. That's the Wall mm. Street mindset. Jim says this, Thomas Edison. I haven't looked up as this who, who said it, but I love the concept of 5% of the people think, 10% of the people think they think, and 85% of the people would rather die than think. Oh, and man. that 5% of the people who are l- really thinking, who are looking at the world differently, give us these articles, these ideas of how do we break free of taxes from a position to at least make it work for us, right? Because if if we have to pay the taxes, we're going to have to, then at least look, can we make it be a beneficial asset to us? Right. And actually, you'll read this in the article, but it is all predicated on the idea of windfalls. We talked about windfalls in episode 21. If you haven't heard that, go back and listen to it. But this is just a a way of looking at the future and saying, okay, hey, I'm a business owner. I've got the potential sale of an asset, my business in the future. Well, do I want to plant that tree today so that it's going to be ready to be harvested at that time? Or do I want to wait to plant the tree when I get that windfall? So this gives us a bucket, right? He gives example in the first scenario as a business owner that has $100,000 a year tax bill. Well, if he just uses an, the IBC strategy, the infinite banking concept to pay those taxes, he was going to do it anyway, right? That 100000 was going to be paid to the IRS one way or another. But now he's created a place to put that windfall, whether it's five, 10, 15 years. We don't know when people are ready to retire or, or to, to sell that asset, but it gives you a place to put it. Well, you wouldn't want that. Well, you definitely want that, especially in, in light of the fact that you've got ups and downs as a business owner. You've, oh, got, yeah. you've got constantly cash flow concerns. When you have to put money aside for taxes, most people are trying to put money aside for taxes in this constant, consistent way, yet all of their cash flows are the opposite. They're not a W-2 employee. They're not getting a paycheck that's the same every single week or biweekly or monthly. That's not the way it works. Well, then when we start trying to apply our life in the paying taxes in this linear way, we are going to have tension, as we just did on one of the previous podcasts. We are talking about tension. We're going to have this unnecessary tension because we're trying to apply a concept of paying taxes in a very linear, consistent way when our cash flows are very inconsistent. 
why wouldn't an idea like th- that was in this article work for us when they're saying, why not instead of paying our taxes directly in this very consistent manner, why would we not save our cash flow in some place that we can access it that helps with shortfalls as the year goes on? But then over time, we have this average. So we may be able to look at it and say, on average, I'm going to pay $100,000 in taxes. But one month, maybe I can put away $10,000. One month, I may be able to put away two, and the next month, I can put away 20. So I may be able to put $100,000 away over a period of 12 months, but it's not you know, $8,800 or $8,300 a month each and every month. Because if I do that, there's going to be one month, it's rice and beans time. It's maybe, right. there, maybe there's an employee not getting a paycheck. Maybe there's a bill, a, a, a accounts payable that's not being paid. Maybe there is an opportunity that I have to pass on because I don't have access to the money. And that was what I thought was so insightful about this article, which disclaimer, we're not giving tax advice. This article is not a tax idea, meaning that this is not a way to save taxes, but it is a way for us as entrepreneurs, as business owners, to think about how do we manage our cash differently? It's the unseen. We've heard the analogy lots of times about the iceberg. Right there's ten percent that sits above the water, and it's what everybody sees. But the bulk of the iceberg lies underneath. That's it is right. the unseen. It is what we talk about in economics. There is this short-term thought of how one law or one piece of you know financial gain has this short-term impact. But what's his long-term effect on things? Well, and I'm just going to jump in with what Jim said about the unseen in the banking scenario, right? The banking function is happening all the time. So to tie this back into the tax strategy, our money is going through someone else's bank. In fact, I'm not sure if we can quote it here or not, but Nelson's book has a great quote about, Nelson Nash, I'm talking about his book, Becoming Your Own Banker, talking about how when we park our money in someone else's bank, They're making a good living off of lending it right back out, sometimes to ourselves, right? And so he he goes through, Jim was uh, really unpacking this, that Bank of America, on average in 2016, was earning 5.2%, and they were paying out 0.2% to their depositors. What's the math on that? He said, when was the last time Wall Street told you they were going to give you a 2,600% return with someone else's money. (laughs) I mean, they're doing it with our money. Well, we think that those are crazy statistics, but remember when he was saying he was playing golf with the hedge fund manager? And the guy said his return goal was 10% per day. Daily. Daily? day. But is that guy playing the same game that everybody else on Wall Street's playing? No, that's the unseen you, you were just talking about, right? Yes. That's what's happening behind the scenes, and we're all in the reassuring lie line just signed up, walking through that line. And over here, we could be creating the system that Jim was talking about out of this article by just changing where we park that money for taxes. But there's fear, right? There's fear preventing us from trying to do that. Well, it's different. It's going against the herd. We've talked about that a number of times on this. Joey, what, what cures fear though? Well, I just used Jim's quote. He said, action. Yes. Action cures fear. Action cures fear because once you've accomplished that, our fear is this little area in our brain telling us our brain is constantly trying to protect us. Like this morning, whenever we were working out, your brain, your brain said, "Stop!" It said, "Stop! Your back's hurting. Stop!" It was I trying to, to push you. through it. <laughs> it was trying to protect you. That's what our brain does. Well, the same thing is true with this. When everybody's standing in that reassuring lie line. It's because they're fearful to have to be the one standing over there in the inconvenient truth. And this podcast is about sharing the inconvenient truth. It's about pointing it out, the unseen, as many times as we can. And I love that we get to interview and talk to people who think that way, who are shining light on areas like this of how do we do something that seems on the surface completely strange, like not paying my taxes directly to the IRS? But instead, saving my taxes over in a completely different area that gives me access to it, but also lets me save it in this area that meets more my cash flow needs. 
Right. It puts me in control of it. Is there a cost to it? Sure, there is. Is there the potential risk that I won't save it? Sure, there is. But if if we live our life in that fear, why are we even? Why don't we just stop our business and go to work for somebody else? Yeah. The thing that Jim said, and I want to just highlight this was the three ways to build wealth without Wall Street were to have access, flexibility, and compounding our money uninterrupted. So to your point, put yourself in the business owner's shoes, right? In the last year, how many times has an opportunity walked by you, walked right across your desk, and if you had been paying your taxes directly to the IRS, you didn't have access to that money right now, you would have missed out on something that you know tons about. You take an opportunity. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. But most people, because they don't change the way they think about taxes, We'll never even see those. Well, and this article gives you some very applicable ways to do this. And the analogy Jim used that money is like a river flowing through our pockets. Yes. And taxes is one of the largest expenses we will have. Who wouldn't want to create a dam? Right. Who wouldn't want to pull that money and get some energy out of it, create a reservoir, create an ability to multiply it? before then we release it downstream. And think about that as an example. When you think about how a dam works, its purpose is to create a pool. It creates a lake, but then there's side effects for it, right? It's the purpose so that we can create energy because as water flows through those dams, they often create electricity. They create something out of it. I'll just say this. When you first started teaching me about infinite banking, this was an aha moment for me. How many dollars were flowing through my pockets, through the bank that I used, and I was getting no benefit for? But now if I just change the way I think about where that cash is stored, even for a short period of time, and then be able to capture that interest in an uninterrupted compounding way, how much more of those dollars can be actually working for me and not doing anything against me. Like that was a game changer for me. And this is a great example using taxes. That's the biggest cash flow that's going to go through our hands and how to make that work. For me. So it's just huge. Just for a little piece here, I want to break what was in this article down because this three parts is written. And I don't, I don't know if it's 14, 15 different pages over this three part series, but just give me some basics here. I don't know what you guys are talking about, Joey. Yeah. I hear you. It seems interesting. I like the analogy of a dam. You know, Russ sort of sounds like Chevy Chase. Who doesn't want a dam? It's the damn damn tour, right? (laughs) Tell me, what what am I missing here? What is this strategy? Why would I want to go read this article? What is this strategy showing? Yeah, so we break it down really with two different business owners. That's the illustration or the examples given. The first one is a business owner that just says, you know what? I've got $100,000 a year tax bill. How can I get that to work? And then he starts putting it through a policy, paying that out. Now, I'm going to go into all the details of how that is. That's very well outlined in the article. But just for you know clarity's sake, he's simply taking one expense and putting it through a policy, in this case, taxes. The second one, and I like the way Jim puts this in our interview, he said, are you a number one business owner or a number two business owner? Number said, two. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he said, it's fine if you start as a number one and you grow to a number two. In What's fact, the difference between a number one and two again? Well, the second guy is taking not only the taxes, the expense of the $100,000 tax. In his case, it might be even more. But he's also putting the profit of his business through it. So they give the example of 1.5 million a year that he's got in profit and taxes that he's putting through this policy. Well, of course, if it works for a smaller amount, it gets better with a larger amount. So, but this is not something you do right out of the gate. In many cases, you kind of grow into it. Well, you'd have to grow into it. And that's the, whenever I read Nelson Ash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker, and on page 48, when he talked about at some point in time, your income should equal the premiums into your insurance policies. I bet you I read that oh, page. That blows people's mind. Five times back to back because I couldn't get my arms around 
how do I get my premiums going into the insurance policy, which in my mind at the time I was thinking of as an expense, how do I get that into premiums? Like, how do well, how do those ever and match? Full, full disclosure, we've been at this for eight, nine, ten years. We're not there yet. No, I'm only like 40%, 30, 40% yeah, now. We're not there yet, but we've got room to grow. So that's why I love this example in this article that you don't have to be there immediately. But now fast forward in both scenarios, these business owners had a windfall. Again, remember, maybe it's the sale of an asset. Maybe it's the sale of your business. Maybe it's, hey, the kids moved out and I have all this excess cash flow that I didn't <laughs> it's have a, before. It's an inheritance, right? Yeah. And those things, if you know those things are coming, where do you want those dollars to start growing? Today, when you start receiving them, or 20 years ago, 15 years ago, however long you could start a policy today and be able to take advantage of that growth the entire time. Which, by the way, we're going to be doing a podcast soon on the distribution yes. from these insurance policies. And when you start seeing how much more money these policies create than any other asset out there, you start trying to figure out, okay, how can I get money into these things? How can I prepare for these windfalls that you speak of, Joey? It really starts making sense. It starts getting me like super excited to right. try to find other avenues that I can create a dam, if you will, for that river of cash that's coming through my hands for the potential of the electricity that's going to create on the backside. That's right. I don't want to go into a whole lot more details about the actual articles. They're, they're there for you to read. We'll put them in the show notes for you to download. But that's kind of the overarching thing. Well, Two and I people, think when, if you're listening to this and you do read those articles, it's going to generate questions. And I want you to feel free to call us and set up. You know, we always have that strategy call sitting right there on our website, which, by the way, how fresh is that thing? That's new look, right? Yes, we've updated the site. Yeah, if you uh, haven't been to the website, Wealth Without Wall Street, lately, it's looking pretty I good. Mean, there's a really good picture of me on there. Russ, not so much, but, you know, we're working on that. Well, because I was looking yeah. at you. I had this strange, like, face, <laughs> thinking, like, what? Is he, what? <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're improving the site. So go and check it out, wealthwithoutwallstreet.com. Again, if you haven't gone back and looked at episode 21 on windfalls, this goes hand in hand with that. So it, well, it gives you that. the understanding of why, right? right? I'm leaving a position of being reactive in everything that I do, which is, oh, great. I have a windfall of money. Now what do I do? Oh, I have to pay taxes. I guess this is the one way to do it. Well, and hopefully this serves as a wake up call, right? We're all busy, busy, busy entrepreneurs, business owners. And who wants to stop and plan for 15 years from now or 20 years from now? I don't know where you're at in terms of your business, but hopefully this says, holy cow, wait a minute. I could be preparing for that future just by this check I'm about to write in the next two weeks. I don't know. Was it the E-Myth? Is it the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster? Is it Good to Great? I don't remember which one of these books that talked about this specific thing. Maybe it was Robert Kiyosaki. I think maybe it is Robert Kiyosaki. But he said, as a business owner, You've got to always be preparing to sell your business. That's the mindset that you have. We were talking about taxes. We we're talking about expenses. How many times are people running their business with, man, I got to expense everything I possibly can to make my income zero? Well, that's great for today. Remember, short yeah. term, that's the top 10% above the water. But what is the unseen is that when you go to sell it, <laughs> what are people buying? That's right? right. You've got to go back and prove, well, you know, actually I was making a bunch of money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now I, I know it looks like I was losing money every year, but that was this game I was playing. We've got to prepare. We got to think about it in that light. What are the long-term consequences of what we're doing? And by preparing, that creates success for us. That means that we do reap those windfalls of selling our business for a profit. Or maybe it's selling it to our children who now oh, have, yeah. have grown up in the business. How does and, this lead to such a ridiculously better legacy for your family? I hope. I mean, okay. we're, what we're talking about is how do you take a life insurance? When is the best time to apply for a life insurance policy? When you're at the tail end of your career and you potentially have health problems and other things that have happened? Or when you're younger and you've got the health that you can qualify for this stuff and then you got this huge death benefit to leave behind after you've had a place to park that money. 
if you're not thinking about this, then what's going to happen is, like you said, you're going to have a windfall and you're going to say, oh, you know what? I ought to take Joey's advice on that and, and start with me one of them insurance policies. And what you just said happens is, oh, well, I'm a type 1 diabetic and yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. Nobody plans for that, but it happens. Or I want to get involved in this passive income game, but I need income today. What, I mean, how do I create that? You put yourself in a position of missing out, unfortunately. Right. We must start looking at this in a way of proactive versus reactive. That's right. I'm glad we could cover this today. Hopefully this has been helpful. Go out, check out the articles and check out our show notes. We'll have plenty of information in there to add to this. We'll catch you on the next episode. Every time, brother, we get in here, we start sharing ideas. I get so excited. I just I just love it, man. And listening to that podcast and going back through some of the strategies that were brought through from our, our good buddy, Jim, I only wish you could have gotten to hear them live. I didn't do them justice. Yeah, Jim, we apologize in advance. I, all my jokes about him looking like Rick Harrison from the <laughs> Pawn Stars. I mean, it was, it, you know, him saying he looked more like Brad Pitt, whatever. Yeah. Mm. But we still got the nuggets. That was good stuff. That's right. And, you know, it all comes from the fact that we have plugged in, gotten created a mastermind. So we've been in years and years with Jim and so many other really great minds. That's where we get these ideas. So, Definitely take advantage of those in your market. What What is in your industry that you can be learning about? If you're not trying to find ways to get involved with other smart people, you're missing out. Abundance. Abundance versus scarcity. Right. Come Sharing. back to that. Absolutely. You need to know what's going on around you. And the only way to do that, the only way to break free of the Wall Street mindset is to listen. I know you're one of those kind of people because you're listening to this podcast. Even after we have so many audio issues. <laughs> Well, I, here, here's another example coming up this coming week, Joey, is that we get an actual professor of economics, Dr. Paul Cleveland, a good friend of ours, somebody who we're going to be plugging all sorts of things that he's done. He breaks down one of the crucial dilemmas, or one of the big obstacles preventing us from getting to be financially successful from his economic mind. Yeah, you're exactly right, Russ. Now, listen in to this small piece from the interview with Paul Cleveland next week. Every business has to be financed. You know, when I've launched an educational services business, you know, to provide for me to have the capital equipment I need to do my work, uh, you know, laptops, cell phones, all this sort of stuff, plus publish my books. I had the, the resources to do that. I had the financing. So I was able to borrow from the insurance companies, print my books and have the business pay the loans off at interest. As revenue came in, you just took the money and you paid it back. Exactly. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.